Hello, everybody. It's a sad, sad, sad situation we find ourselves in. Our current commander in chief, as they're unloading the bodies of our warriors, 13 warriors that gave their lives. 13 sons lost. As they're being offloaded, our commander in chief decides that's a good time to check his watch because he's got better places to be, better things to do. I'm not going to forgive him for that. There's a lot of things I'm not going to forgive him for. But that's not why we're here. We're here because I'm here to rant. That's what I do. Now we've taken in a bunch of Afghanian refugees. I understand their plight. I do. But are they vaccinated? Hmm. We got to have a vaccine. Some of us have to have a vaccine to go to work. Not me, but some. But these refugees can come in to America unvaccinated. Now they're distributing them throughout our country. Some of them are going to Kalamazoo, Michigan. Now my problem with this <coughs> is not that we're helping people in need. I'm all in favor of helping people in need. My problem with this is 9-11. For those of you who remember 9-11, we had people in our country that performed terrorist acts against us in our country. Why? Because they were here on education visas or, you know, work visas or what have you. Now all of a sudden, Taliban has taken over the country of Afghanistan. We're bringing the refugees from Afghanistan into our country putting them in places like Kalamazoo, Michigan. And just down the road from Kalamazoo, Michigan is a military um, fort. Just down the road. Why didn't they get sent to Detroit? Kalam Kalamazoo. Why didn't they get sent to Grand Rapids? No, no, they got sent to Kalamazoo with a military post just down the road. Now, I'm not saying that all of the um, refugees are Taliban, but they could be. We don't know. We have no way of telling. They could be Taliban. They could be Al-Qaeda. We have no way of knowing, but we're bringing them into our country, placing them next to our military established posts. And then what? Then what? What's going to happen? Maybe nothing. Maybe they are all just innocent refugees. What if they're not? What if they're not? What if we are putting Taliban insurgents next to our military posts? What if we are setting ourselves up for another internal attack against our enemy? 
We've already got stuff going on. I mean, they're already finding ways to wedge us against each other. Mask, no mask. Vaccinated, unvaccinated. They're finding ways to get us to fight amongst ourselves. And now they're bringing in Afghanian refugees that could be, could be, insurgents, terrorists. I mean, are they doing background checks on these people? Probably not. They didn't have time. They didn't even have time to get all of us, Amer all of our American people out of there. Nope, Joe just wrapped up the package and handed it over to the Taliban. Here you go. Saw a post on Facebook. I'll probably get fact-checked on this, but... Saw a post on Facebook that claimed that a reporter asked Joe Biden about the withdrawal. And he, according to the way the post the meme goes the reporter asked Joe you know why didn't you get all our people out and did you know those people were there and he said we had a list of all of the Americans that were in the country and we turned that list over to the Taliban for their approval for us to remove those people after Taliban took over. And the reporter, I guess, said something along the lines, so you basically gave them a hit list. Now, according to the meme, the camera shut off before Joe could answer. But all things considered, and Joe's wonderful time in office, wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. Now, I just put a post on, on my Facebook page last night asking for people on my friends list to let me know if they still thought that Joe Biden was the right choice. And by that, of course, I didn't refer to those patriots like myself who didn't vote for Joe. I was referring to all of my other friends who did. My friends who put all the posts up against my posts saying that Joe Biden was the right choice and that Trump was ruining our country. So I wondered how many were still out there. So I put up a post asking, honestly, I wanted to know, I honestly want to know how many Biden supporters are still supporting him or how many have changed their mind. But I'm not getting much response. I'm getting response from my patriots. They're saying I never did vote for him, never will. But I'm not getting response from my other friends. I don't know why. Maybe they're afraid. Anyway, just some thoughts on my head. We're going to bring in the Afghan refugees that could be Taliban. And we're going to put them all over America next to our military posts. We might as well hand them a key. Because they're already dividing us. They want you, if you wear a mask, to hate those people that don't. They want you, if you've gotten the vaccine, to coerce or hate those of us who have not gotten the vaccine. Why? Why should we hate each other? Why should we go fight amongst each other? We're all Americans. I mean, seriously, I don't understand 
how some uh, some of my viewing audience, we'll call it that, can honestly say that they want these things to happen against our country. I was in the army and did my time. My boys were in the army, did their time. Could have been one of my boys in those boxes that Joe so carelessly checked his watch. Could have been one of my boys. So that really irritates me. Really irritates me that Joe Biden could care less about our military forces. Now you all know I'm against the virus. I'm also against the vaccine. I'm also against mask wearing. But I'm not against this country. And since we all live here, none of us should be against this country. We should all be on the same side, fighting for our country, fighting for our freedoms. You got the vaccine? Great. You're protected. You don't have to worry about me if I get it or not. It has nothing to do with you. That's your choice, my choice. Don't want to wear, don't want to own a gun? Don't own a gun. But your choice to not own a gun should not affect my choice to own a gun. Don't want to wear a mask? Good. Don't wear a mask. But don't go after those who do wear a mask. It's their choice. And that's what it's about, people's freedoms. We're losing our liberties. We're losing our freedoms. Because the government and mainstream media are pitting us against each other. They're telling us, they're teaching us to hate. They're teaching our children to hate. Our grandchildren. Let's teach love. Let's teach understanding. Let's teach compassion. Let's teach acceptance. My comments about the Afghanian refugees are not a racial comment, just a question. Do we know for certain that they're not Taliban? Do we know are we putting any precautions in place to keep an eye on potential Taliban members within those groups of refugees? And if we're not, why aren't we? We should be. a bunch of Americans were to suddenly go to Afghanistan, you can bet that they would be detained until they could decide whether or not we were a threat. I'm not saying to arrest all of them. I'm talking about containing the problem before it becomes a problem. Now, I'm sure some of you out there are going to hate me for it. But I remember 9-11. I also remember a lot of other military actions that we've had over the years. Granada, Honduras, Vietnam. And what comes to mind on all of that is the population It's hard to tell who's the bad guy, who's the good guy. I mean, this isn't 1776 where we could say, hey, he's wearing a red coat, he's a bad guy. No, in the modern day, 
the bad guy can just be right there beside you. You wouldn't even know it. So, my belief, my opinion, we should contain the Afghan refugees until we know they're not a threat. Not start putting them out in places like Kalamazoo, Michigan. <clears throat> not start inviting them to live across the country. I mean, who's, who's footing the bill for this? Uh, I'm curious on that, too. Who's paying for their food, their, their um, shelter? Who's paying for their clothing? They didn't come here as refugees with millions of dollars in their pocket. So who's footing the bill? That's another question I have. Because if it's my taxpaying money going to support terrorists, I'd like to know before they have our guns, our choppers, our tanks. I'd like to know beforehand, Joe. Because I don't want you spending my money to promote terrorism. I don't want you using my money that I gave to the government to undermine the very fabric of our country. Now, the wife and I were talking, and I said, you know, the Taliban can, show, can teach us something. The Taliban is a relatively small organization. They don't have a lot of members. I mean, obviously they have enough. But if Americans stood up for what they believed in, as strongly as the Taliban stand up for what they believe in, nobody would mess with us. Nobody used to. After 9-11, everybody was crying against the, against the Al-Qaeda. We were united. We were united against Al-Qaeda after 9-11. Why aren't we united now against Taliban? Why are some of the some of Americans out there saying, oh, it's okay that they got Afghanistan? It's not okay. But they took a small number of like-minded people, the Taliban, and they acted. They acted. They did something. If we as Americans worked together, stood together, and acted, we could save our country. Nobody deserves to be impeached. Plain and simple. They tried to impeach President Trump for doing a good job, but they're not going to impeach Joe for screwing stuff up? Wrong answer. Saw somebody had posted that picture of Joe Biden and saying that he was a great man doing a great job at, that he was hired to do and that they support him. Great. Glad you support him. I don't. But the key word in there was hired. That he was hired to do. You're dang right he was hired because he certainly wasn't voted for. He wasn't voted into office. He was hired into office. Unfortunately, he was hired by China and Taliban and Russia. I mean, why is it within the first couple of months he decides to destroy jobs, open our borders, reduce our independency from foreign... Um, interests 
Oh, yeah, he did all that within the first couple of months. I mean, he stopped the pipeline. Now we got to get our fuel from overseas. Why? It's a really good question. How much are you paying for gas, people? How much are you paying for gas? Before Joe Biden took office and shut down the pipeline, you were paying a lot less. Before he stopped construction on the wall and put all those people out of business, put all of those people out of work. How much were you paying for a gallon of milk? How much were you paying for your bread? How much were you paying for your food? Your clothes? A lot less. And now everybody's like, well, he's created all these jobs. He didn't create jobs. People going back to work to the jobs that they were kicked out of is not creating jobs. It's putting people back to work after you force them to stay home. He didn't create jobs. He destroyed jobs. He destroyed our independence from foreign interests. Joe Biden deserves to be impeached. But it isn't just him. So don't think if they impeach Biden, it's going to be the end of it. No, there's a lot more influences there. Do your research. Take a look. You'll find some very amusing things coming out. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not asking you to believe in me. I'm asking you to think for yourself. Everybody should think for themselves. I do. I hear something. I find out the truth. I go to the source. And if I can't get to the source, I find as many differing opinions and facts as I can find on that subject. Because I'm a firm believer you have to find out the truth. That's how I chose my religion. That's how I chose my life. It's how you should choose. Don't follow along blindly, believing mainstream media. Find other outsources of information and weigh the information yourself. Find other outlets of facts and weigh all the facts, not just the ones the government wants you to have. <sighs> Think for yourself. Question everything. Believe in yourself. Believe in your own ability to think. The United States was built on the premise of freedoms, liberties, granted to us by God above. Those very same liberties are being taken from us daily. Because people don't think. Because they don't challenge. Well, I'm making a challenge for all of you. Stand up. And fight. For what you believe in. If you believe you should have the right to go to church. Then go to church. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Want to buy a gun? Buy a gun. Don't, tell them, don't let anybody tell you you can't. Question everything. Definitely question authority. Learn everything. Learn facts. Everybody's talking about follow the science. If anybody followed the science, well, you'd find out some things. So, I've probably taken up enough time and melted some of your ears with my comments. But before I go, I want to point out a few things. Facts. Fact number one, COVID isn't new, people. COVID did not just spring into being in 2020. COVID-19 is the 19th strain of the COVID virus that they have discovered. 
But COVID's been around for years upon years in other strains. COVID, fact number two, COVID is a variant of the flu virus. See, I do my research. I learn things. I find the facts. You want to follow the science? Find the facts. Here's a fact for you. Fact number three. Neither the vaccine nor the COVID test that you get taken are 100%. Neither one of them work. Neither one of them are even within acceptable range of 100%. Do your research. Find out the truth. And then think for yourself. Weigh your pros, weigh your cons, weigh the facts, and make up your own mind. Think for yourself. Only you can decide what's best for you. And for all of you companies and corporations out there who are trying to control everybody else's lives, knock it off. Knock it off. We'll buy from you if we want to buy from you. We won't if we don't want to. You telling us we have to wear a mask or have to get vaccinated or whatever. That's not your job. Your job is to sell us stuff. Your job is to create desire for us to buy your products. That's your job. Stay there. Shout out to Bill Gates. Your job is not science. Well, technically, it is computer science, not medical science. So get off your soapbox and get back to work doing what you're supposed to be doing, computer science. That goes for all of them. Zuckerberg, all of them. You don't decide what we do. We do. We decide for ourselves. Sell us your products. Create a desire, create a need, and sell us what you have. But don't tell us what to do. That being said, love to all. I gotta get out of here. Remember, love one another. It's all we got. And if we all stand together with our beliefs and love on our side and our religious preferences, whatever those may be, if we stand together, we will not fall. We will not fall. A forest is stronger than a tree. Remember that. Love you all. Take care. Talk to you soon.